It's CEO DJ Shields, Mr. I Do This Shit. I'm fucking with my nigga Hoodlum ENT. If it ain't Hoodlum, I ain't fucking with him. Savannah, Georgia, stand up. Alright, so you can let the people know where we are right now. We with for those who don't know you if they don't. I'm CEO DJ Shields, official DJ for Quando Rondo and Young Boy. We at IDTS Radio. Alright, so I want to start from the beginning of it all. So you're originally from Savannah, right? First, yep, Savannah, born, 912. Born and raised? Yeah. Which part? Like, which South side. Where's South side. Yeah. Got you. So like, how was it before the music then? How was your life like? Basketball player. Play Great. ball. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah I'm, a I'm a ball player. Mm. Yeah. So tell me, like, where did the music come, come along? My cousin, his name Gene, but they call him Lil' Cuz. He from, he from Taterville. It was him and a dude named Smoke. Him and a dude named Smoke DZ, they had this uh this little entertainment group called By the Dollar. Everybody know about By the Dollar. They was out there, but shit, I, I don't know, I don't know how to rap. So shit, I just wanted to be one of them niggas like, hey cuz, let me get, let me hold your shirt. I wanna wear your shirt. You know what I'm saying? And shit, he let me get a shirt, and I just felt like like shit, I wanna be, I wanna find some way to be tied into this shit. I wanna be some way dealing with the music, but then. While me trying to do that, I ran into two niggas. I ran into DJ Protocol and I ran into uh, DJ Machete. And Machete was teaching me shit and Protocol was teaching me shit. And then after I got done with Protocol and uh, DJ Machete, CJ, DJ Ed, and the EJ franchise, them boys really molded me. Like, and I just took off from there, just added my own flavor to their style. You know what I'm saying? Because shit, them boys really was just like looking out. Right. Yeah. So. Even when they introduced like the form of like DJing and things of that nature, did you already know know that that's what you want to take as far as as a career? Yeah, I wanted to do that, and I also want to make beats and stuff like that. But I wanted to do the DJing thing because it looked harder. I don't want nothing easy. I like to do I like to do the hard shit because once I mm -hmm. once I defeat it, and I'm like, yeah, I did that shit. So that's why I like math. If anything dealing with numbers, I could do numbers. You see what I'm saying? And right. D, uh, DJing, that shit deal with numbers. You gotta know them BPMs, you gotta know numbers, what go with what, you gotta remember shit, like that shit serious. Yeah, so how long did it take you to actually master or get the grasp of the craft, I wanna say? Shit, I, I can't say I'm no master, but shit, for me to comp, you know, to understand the situation of what's going on, how to do this, and how to do everything, dealing with turntables and stuff like that, it took me a good, six months to a year just to, you know what I'm saying, to do what I need to do. Cause I remember me just having a laptop. I just had a laptop and and I had this thing called Virgil DJ. I ain't had nothing. I just had this little cord and it'll hook up the speakers. It'll hook up to a mixer like this and stuff like that. And that was it. And I called myself, and I, you know, that's really not no DJ, but in my mind, I'm a DJ now because I'm playing music. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm just playing music and music and stuff like that. And that was it. And then, by me doing that, I built a buzz with the DJ because I did this girl birthday party, Sweet 16. And uh, they liked what I, what, they, what I did. So I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to keep doing it then. You know what I'm saying? Because this right here is going to make, make me or break me. Either way it go. And she liked what I was doing. So I took it from there and kept it going. And then I asked uh, Vicky Sean at the time to uh, let me come in and DJ and stuff like that. He turned me down like two times. Say, no. Nah, no, I'm good. I got a DJ, blase, blase. Kept turning me down, and one time he just let me in the door. And he, when he let me in the door, it was up. I just, I just kept turning on, and everybody knew me from being an uptown DJ. Knew me from being an uptown DJ, so I did uptown. The next thing you know, when I was doing uptown, Uncle Mac reached out to me, and I started doing Uncle Mac parties. I was doing both of them back to back. So basically, them folks ain't really care. It really felt some type of way, but like, hey, you can't be from Oak Day Party, and you gotta do my party, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But me, I didn't care. I was trying to get some paper. I'm, I'm on some paper, man. So, <laughs> I'm doing whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't promoting the party, I'm promoting me. Right. So that's what I do, I promote me. Anytime I name on the fly, I promote me. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm the DJ. <laughs> if, I don't, if I don't play the right music, mm -hmm. your party, it's, it's up to me to make your party be bad or good. So I promote me, so everywhere I go, that's how I was doing the situation. Got you. All right. And even for you, also have you know you DJ ships. You also missed. I do this shit. So where did that come in? And when did you get the slogan on? Uh, 
I did that once. I bought Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates in 2014, Frozen Paradise. A lot of folks like was doubting me, you know. Even then, you know, folks won't even let me inside the clubs to DJ. I keep asking them like, like, let me DJ. But this was the older folks, so they they ain't knowing who I am. But at the end of the day, I'm like, hey, I'm trying to get in the dough. Like, let me DJ in the, the older club. Cause all I was doing was team parties. I ain't never did like a grown folks type of situation, nothing like that. So I was trying to get in. So folks ain't want it like. They ain't, they, ain't, they ain't fuck with me for real. So right. next thing you know, and I like, shit, if I can't DJ at your event or whatever, I'm just gonna do my own event. And my cousin had some paper. My cousin had some paper up in Atlanta. He had some paper and, and he asked me what I wanna do. I said, shit, let's bring an artist. And he was like, whatever artist you wanna bring. I said, don't tell me that. <laughs> so when he said that, I brought Kevin Gates. We did Kevin Gates. We did Kevin Gates. I promoted everything. I, my cousin was still in Atlanta. I was in Savannah, promoting everything. Everything, me, fly design, me, everything. I'm talking about getting a promotion team from Savannah State campus. Everything, like every t passing out tickets, selling tickets. Mm -hmm. Me, they, my phone did numbers. So the stuff like that. So next thing that ever since then, people was rocking with me. Like they were really like, fuck well, We need shields here. We need shields DJ. We need shields DJ. Like. And they was fucking with me in the clubs. Like I still, I still fuck the club to this day. Frozen ain't there no more, but I still fuck the club on the lot, man. I still mess with that club on the to this day. I do my own little event called Flex Friday, first Friday of the month each time, man. I sell out every time. I can have a hundred tickets in one day, and I sell them out in one day each time. You know, it, it never fails. Have you played in every club, Ryan? Every urban club, every hip hop club. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. All right. Every, but see, all right, even the fast forward to two, like, so when did you even link up with Final Rondo then? I was I was a script club DJ. I was working at Karma. I was working at Karma, but I, I really linked up with Lil Bruh at OT. Me and my little partner, uh, DJ Highlight, like, we used to do One Crush Wednesdays. And me and him used to be in that. Well, it could be us people. Like, uh, how many people in here now? We gonna have like four, or five people in the club. We don't care. We said we'll be back next week. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. But I'm always had that ear for music, and I always used to be the one that reach out to the artist. Say, hey, come perform at my shit. Hey, come perform at. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, come perform with that blase, blase. Ain't nobody really want to mess with little bro. But me and little bro was already emailing each other, and I'm like, hey man, come perform, you know, at my uh, at my event or whatever. I do a team party just so I want to see you perform, cause I like what he was doing, and I, yeah. I was the only DJ hollering at me and him, the only one talking. Even when I was at the strip club, I said, let's get little Quando in here. They be like, who that is? I said, let's get little Quando in here. They didn't want to do it. They didn't want to mess with me. They were picking out other artists in the city. You see what I'm saying? But they kept sleeping on little bro. I said, bro, little bro, hard. Oh. I don't care what you talking about, but yeah. Lil Bro Hart and I was playing this song with him and uh, Wesley Poole, 38 uh, Revolver. Then he be like, who that is? I was like, bro, the same person I kept asking y'all to bring. Yeah. Yeah, so that that's how me and him played, but me and him kept emailing and stuff. And then Karma happened to bring Youngboy, NBA Youngboy. Uh, and Cornell cousin or uncle, I think it's his uncle, he came and reached out to me while I was DJing. And been like, hey, Cornell wants you to be his DJ. I remember that shit like, damn. Real here, cause I thought like I ain't no cap. Now I thought little little bro made it, and he got a deal. I thought little bro can go like, hey, I'm about to find me another DJ in the industry that's already was on. But little yeah. bro kept his word and kept it solid. You know, I, I respect little bro. He, he reached out and like, hey, yeah, I want him. I want him. So and so, me, this man talk damn it every day. Talk every day. You see what I'm saying? But yeah, that's how relay cause his uncle told me what was going on, and then me and him start chopping up and say, yeah, this is what we gonna do. And I was with it. Yeah. So, when you started even doing the DJ, I'm going to say, not even from the beginning, but during the, you know, the middle of it, while you was in the groove of it and like doing all the parties, did you already have a plan of, okay, I'm going to attach myself with the artist or I'm going to help one of these artists get out there that, you know, buzz? I, I, don't, I don't call it attach myself to an artist. Mm -hmm. I was on that, you see me some music and I like it, I'm breaking it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I like all the artists. I still do. I like every artist. You see what I'm saying? Mm. I like every artist. Let me, let me take that back. I like every artist that's really putting in work. I like an artist that's really like serious about this, not trying to get in here just to want to be Savannah famous. I, I, we, we don't need that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to just everybody know me in the Pope. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I love Savannah, but I'm trying to get worldwide. Folks out here got kids, you see what I'm saying? Don't, so don't waste my time trying to waste yours. You see what I'm saying? So let's, mm -hmm. let's get to it for real. So mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Cause you know it's a lot of artists like, oh yeah, I rap, I do this, I do this. And it's a lot of artists that come to me and be like, hey, I got a mixtape I'm out to drop and I want you on it. And the time I hit them with a deposit, they don't reach back out to me. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. hey, give me a deposit. Let, let's go. Now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When I was doing a mixtape for 150, y'all weren't messing with me. Mm -hmm. Y'all doing y'all were going to bigger rankings, y'all were going to the, all the big DJs, hood rich and all of them. But it was a dude in your city that had more, you know, had more trust in you than, than they do, because they just gonna get your money and keep it moving. They ain't gonna care about you, you see what I'm saying? Until right. you blow. I'm the one I'm like, hey yeah, I'm gonna keep pushing it. You know what I'm saying? I'm in every club in the, in the savannah, why not? Let me go ahead and do it. But you know, they they ain't mess with me like that though, so it is what it is. Right. Do you think when it comes to artists and them getting their music, do you think they that has been lost as far as reaching out to the DJ to get their music to break it? I feel I feel like artists now they feel like they're too comfortable now. Like hey, we don't need the DJ, we don't need the help because I know I'm fine, I'm, I'm hard. So basically, I don't I don't need to give him nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm I'm gonna do it myself. That type it's too many. I I could do it myself. Even myself, like I can't do, I can't, I can't spend music if I ain't got no music. You see what I'm saying? So what is the DJ for if I can't spend no music? You know what I'm saying? We gotta help each other out. The artists gotta help the DJs out, and the DJs gotta help the artists out. Either way it goes, it's a 50-50 thing right here. Cause if you hot, trust me, leave a DJ is spinning your song right now. You see what I'm saying? Or somebody listening to your song right now. But it's, it just, it's too many. I'm a standalone guy. I don't need nobody. Mm -hmm. So that some of them artists like that. Instead of like, yeah, I I, I need your help. And too, like they pride. Like I need your help. You know what I'm saying? I'm like shit. I, I'm I'm gonna come up to the artist like, hey, shit. I need your help. Hey, you got you got a banger, man. Let, let, let's work. You got a banger. Let's push this shit. Yeah, I, I ain't trying to get no clock out clock out you. I'm already I'm already on. Yeah. So.